Allah let it happen. Allah allowed it to happen. So the question, the final question is, why did Allah allow it to happen? For two reasons. Everyone here knows, nothing happens except by the will of Allah. So I'm going to give you a, a, a silly example. I will be a silly example. Like somebody picks up a rock outside when you leave Jum'ah, they throw it on your head. It hits your head really hard, you turn back, you're angry at them, they say, no, no, this is a fitna from Allah. Allah is testing you. It's not me. That's a fitna from Allah. Because nothing happens except by the will of Allah. مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ No calamity strikes, no difficulty can hit anybody except if Allah wanted it to happen. So bro, I know I picked up the rock and I hurled it at you and I'm impressed with my own aim. It was a pretty good hit. But the issue is you shouldn't be taking this up with me. You should take this up with the government. You should take this up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, it's a, it's a matter of intelligence. You know, give another example to help you understand this problem. You know, insects, they have very small brains. Yeah? If you're messing around with an insect and you kind of take a straw and you kind of mess around with it a little bit, it starts fighting with the straw. It starts attacking the straw. Because to, to, the, to the insect, the source of the problem is the straw. So it attacks it. But if you take something with a little bit of a bigger brain, like a dog or a snake, and you take a stick and you mess with the snake, it's not going to attack the stick. It sees that behind the stick is somebody else. It's going to bite you. The dog is not going to bite the stick. The dog is going to bite you because it has a bigger brain. It can see, okay, the fitna is the stick, but the real fatin, the real one putting me in that situation is the one holding the stick. And we have bigger brains than dogs and snakes. So the guy's arguing, I threw a rock at you. You see me, but I'm just the stick. Behind me is the power of Allah. Allah did this, not me, so blame Allah. That's his. So this idea, and therefore, because every, everything happens by the will of Allah, we should blame Allah for everything bad that happens. You know? Now to understand this problem, and to, 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 for, first I wanted to make sure you understand the problem. Now, what do, how do we understand the solution? What Allah has done is separated those two things. Allah allowing something to happen is not the same as Allah desiring something to happen. Allah allows many things to happen in this world that make Allah angry. Allah in fact gets angry in the Quran. If everything happened the way Allah wants it to happen or the way Allah desires by the pleasure of Allah, everything happened by the rida of Allah, then Allah should never be upset about anything because He's the one who did all of it. But when Allah says, غضيب الله عليهم, Allah got angry at them. What, is the, what did the Mufassirun describe here? There's a difference between the rida of Allah, the, the pleasure of Allah, Allah doing something willingly, or rather not willingly, out of His desire to do something, out of His will, but rather more, He allowed it to happen. He in His wisdom decided, I will allow certain things to happen, even though He Himself is not pleased with those things. He gave human beings that freedom to do things that are displeasing to Him. He gave them that freedom. And the first time Allah did this, when he created the human beings, even the angels were confused. Why are you giving the human beings this power to do things that you don't like? Ya Allah, you don't like these things, but you're letting them do these things. How come you're letting them do them? You're gonna, you're, they couldn't understand it. And Allah Azza wa said, these human beings are created for a much more complex and powerful purpose that even the angels were not yet ready to understand in the a'lamun ba'da ta'lamun. I know something you don't know. That's what he told the angels. Now, Allah has given me the freedom to displease him. Forget talking about anybody else. I'm not here to talk about Fir'aun or Shaitan or I'm here to talk about myself. And every one of us should be thinking about themselves. Allah has given me the ability to disobey him. Allah has given me the freedom to upset him. The freedom to make him angry, the freedom to backbite, the freedom to slander, the, the freedom to, to eat haram, the freedom to attack someone else, to hurt someone else, to steal. He's given me that freedom. He's given me the reign to do it. So before I complain about how come this one got away with it and that, that one got away with it, how come the volim gets away with it, before we say that, I have to ask myself, what do I get away with? What do I get away with? 
Somebody came to me not too long ago because of what's happening in the world and we all know what's happening in Gaza, may Allah Azza help the believers in Gaza and grant the shuhada Jannah and grant their family sabr and give us an ounce of that kind of tawakkul and iman that those people have demonstrated and give them nusra. Um, but somebody came and asked, how come Allah is letting that happen? How come Allah doesn't just, doesn't just stop it? Because it's a fitna from Allah. It's a fitna from Allah. How come Allah doesn't just stop it? So the question then becomes, let's think about this reasonably. If you want Allah to stop it, if you want Allah to intervene, should Allah not intervene every time you and I disobey Allah? Where do you draw the line? No, if they're killing people, then Allah should stop. But if they're stealing, that's not so bad. It's okay, Allah doesn't have to intervene yet. Or if you're lying about something, then no, no, no. Don't, don't make your tongue, force your tongue to say the true thing. No, no, not that much control. But some lim after some limits, Allah should just stop things. Allah put human beings on this earth and He allowed them to be a fitna for each other. Allah allowed them to be a fitna for each other. And when we take the fitna that we put each other in, human beings put each other in fitna, and then we say, no, 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 this is Allah's fault. Allah is the one who did this, not the people. That is what's called when you put yourself in fitna. The third one. It is from Allah, only in that Allah allowed you to be tested. Allah created a situation and allowed you to be tested to see how I'm going to do, how you're going to do. That's it. You know, there are other people other than Islam, they believe in God too. And some people believe in a God that's sadistic. He enjoys torturing people. He enjoys watching the show. You know, like old kings they used to have for their entertainment. They used to go into an arena. They'd bring out a prisoner and they'd bring out a lion. And they'd enjoy watching the lion devour the, the human being for their own entertainment. So people got this sick idea that kings, they like to enjoy their subjects when they're suffering. So some people even develop this philosophy, well, you know, there's a God, he created the universe, but he just, he's just enjoying the show, watching us kill each other, watching us just burn each other. This is the kind of God. This concept is actually there. This is what you call people putting themselves in fitna. This is what this is. Allah even describes this subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. But when Allah puts me and you through fitna, it is because, what's the purpose? Let's, well, let's conclude it. What's the right way to understand that Allah is putting me through fitna? If somebody stole money from me, that person put me in fitna. But Allah let it happen. Allah allowed it to happen. So the question, the final question is, why did Allah allow it to happen? For two reasons. Allah was testing that, the thief, and Allah was testing me. And that person has already failed because they stole. Now the only, the only part left is what am I going to do? Am I going to pass this test or not? Because there's two different tests. The valim has his own test, the mazloom has his own test. Both of them are being tested. The valim already failed because they did against the will of Allah. But the one who has been wronged, now they have to decide how they're going to react. Are they going to re react according to the will of Allah? Or are they going to react against the will of Allah? Are they going to say, what can I learn from this? How do I respond to this within reason, within what Allah has allowed me to respond to? Does this affect my relationship with Allah Himself? Or no? And for people, when, when people have this problem that they want to blame Allah for the crisis that they're going through, I'll tell you, Allah put in our fitrah, He put in human nature. You don't even have to be Muslim to understand this. Allah put in our nature the understanding that actually it is human beings that put each other in difficulty. If you were driving your car right now and somebody hit you in the back, Allah protect you, but if that happened, somebody hit you in the back, immediately you don't say, Ya Allah, ma hadhihi al-fitna. You, you look back and say, hey man, watch where you're, why are you on the phone? Immediately you blame the guy who hit you. You didn't blame Allah. You didn't blame Allah. You say, hey, give me your driver's license. Let's call the police. You're holding him responsible immediately, yes? And these are the same people who when, when they do, when something wrong happens to them, they say, well, you know, I want to hold this person responsible. But when they themselves do something wrong, they say, well, it was the will of Allah. What can I do? Allah ma sha'a fa'al. You see? It's a kind of hypocrisy, isn't it? I want to hold others responsible, for, but not myself. 
So people philosophize about these things and they talk about these things and they put themselves in fitna and Allah says about people like that, Ala fil fitnati sakatu. Haven't they already fallen into fitna? Haven't they already fallen? This is why studying the book of Allah and contemplating the book of Allah is so important. This is why understanding there's a, there's, a, there's a seen world and there's an unseen world. And the things that Allah does, they have a purpose behind them. It's never purposeless. Allah did not create me without purpose and no situation that Allah put me in is without a purpose. And every one of those purposes has hikmah in it. People do things, stupid things to each other. But Allah never allows even those stupid things to not have a wise purpose behind them. That's why he's Al-Hakim. That's, that's why he's Yudabbiru Al-Amr, right? He, he does Tadbir Al-Amr. He plans everything. Even the things that we do that weren't planned by us, were badly planned by us, behind them there is a great hikmah that Allah allows to happen. May Allah Azza wa Jal not allow us to become people that become maftun, that become people fallen into fitna that falsely attribute the tests of Allah for the wrong reasons to people. People do things to each other for sadistic reasons, but Allah only tests me for my own benefit. There's never any test that Allah put me through except that I was going to benefit from it. Somehow it was going to be something that raises me in ranks. Right? Allah is going to raise the ranks among you, those who believe and those who've been given knowledge. Allah will raise the ranks and Allah only raises the ranks by more and more and more tests. So may Allah Azza wa Jal make us understand those tests and be able to live up to the tests that we are going to be facing in our lives. This is the final statement I'll give to, uh, to, to, to myself and to all of you. Allah Azza wa Jal prepared the Ummah. He prepared the Ummah. When he, in Surah Al-Baqarah, He declared us to be a new Ummah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا He declared us to be a nation, a balanced nation. And he, in that same surah, he said, بِشَيْءٍ We're going to test you, absolutely test you with all kinds of things. مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ We're going to put you in a lot of tests. Lots and lots of tests. But what will be the... How do you know you passed a test? Who will get the good grade? How do you know if you're passing the test? That's the end of that ayah. Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِدِينَ Congratulations to those who passed the test. Congratulations to the people that can have sabr. And what does sabr mean? Those who whenever the difficulty or whatever calamity, whatever test strikes them, they say we belong to Allah, we have to go back to Allah also. They understand every one of these tests is temporary and return to Allah is permanent. Temporary difficulty, permanent reward. Just like you and I, we have temporary difficulty. Students that have exams coming up, studying is difficult, temporary difficulty, long-term benefits. You have, uh, if you're running a business and it's high, you know, some people in the retail business, there's, there's Black Friday and, you know, Shaitan Thursday, whatever they got. They got, you got. You got those sales and you got, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of headache, there's a lot of employee problems, there's a lot of business problems, there's a lot of security problems, all that stuff. But you're putting all that work in, long-term benefits. The money that comes in is really good. Right? So every time there is long-term benefit, you have to go through difficulty first. Right? And believers understand this about their entire life. Allah will put me through one short-term difficulty, then another, then another, then another, even if it's a lifelong sickness. Even a lifelong sickness is a short-term difficulty compared to the long-term benefit that's coming. And that's what they get from inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and only Allah to Allah alone is it that we are going to return. May Allah Azza wa make us all, who, uh, those who pass all of the fitan that come our way. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikri.